Hello, today I'm in Gub Bridge and I'm going to have a look at the two form of viaducts on the St Andrews Railway. St Andrews Railway itself is only three and a half miles in length, linking Lucas Station to St Andrews. As with any good railway line, it had a couple of viaducts on it. These crossed the motorway water, not too far from Lucas Station, and the River Eden, just here in Gub Bridge. As with any railway in this area, it happens to have a book written about it. It's the St Andrews Railway and it's actually a pretty good book. It's quite thick, there's uh, plenty to it, but there's loads of information about these viaducts within here. I'll uh, quickly find some of it for you, show you some of the diagrams. So there's a diagram showing the junction just south of Lucas Station and the motorway viaduct just below it. And then here we go. Here's the uh, bigger one, the Gar Bridge or Eden Viaduct, which uh, passes over the Eden just there. It also has some uh, pretty good pictures, so you can see see those pictures there. There's quite a lot going on. As trains left Gar Bridge Station, they passed over a level crossing, which goes over the A919. That is now no longer in place because the A919 is a very busy road. It forms part of the link between St Andrews and Dundee so you can get an idea of how much traffic uses it. So beyond the level crossing, the line now ran due east before reaching the Eden Viaduct, which was the major engineering feature on the line. The original wooden structure was some 300 feet in length, but was later replaced by a plate girder structure of nine spans, supported on eight sets of cylindrical stone piers, linked by iron cross braces, and in similar style to its contemporary viaduct, the motorway viaduct. From the downside, you can see Bishop Wardlord's original stone bridge, which was built in the 1500s, and the 1937 concrete road bridge, which carries modern A91 traffic across the River Eden at Gar Bridge. Once trains got to the other side of the bridge, they then passed behind the Gar Bridge Hotel and carried on towards St Andrews. I know the video is meant to be about the railway viaducts, but I've just noticed the uh, date stone here on the concrete bridge. You can see the two of them linking together. 1419 for this uh, old structure through there. That's quite impressive. Two road bridges side by side, and the rail bridge is obscured, but lies just over there. was the start of the St Andrews Railway, which came across and very quickly met its first obstacle, the motorway water, and the viaduct crossed over there and it ends just at the other side of the trees. And the motorway water has a bit of a railway history connected to it, in that it seems to parallel a couple of railway lines, as well as being crossed by this one. It follows the East Coast Rail Line that you can see over there, until it reaches St Fort Junction, and it then followed the North Fife Railway so just the other side of Kilmeny before it disappears into the hills and presumably starts as a trickle of water somewhere. So probably not the most interesting of rivers, but if you like railways, chances are you'll come across this one at some point. Okay, so I found myself below the motorway viaduct. This is the uh, shorter one of the two, but it's also more intact in that it has these uh, metal braces between the pillars. And it's also in a much more secluded spot. There's nobody around here, so it's quite nice being down here. Where you hear the wind rustling through all the reeds over there. Up the hill there is the abutment, where the line would have reached the other side of the river, and then carried on straight towards Eden Viaduct, and eventually St Andrews, about three miles away from this point. And unlike the ones on the Eden Viaduct, you actually get up to this particular abutment for a closer look, so I'm going to do that and show you a few things. Now I know I say this about a lot of places, but they could really do a cutting back the trees here. You can just about see the viaduct through there. I'm pretty much standing at rail level. So if I turn back, this is where the line would have connected in. There's uh, one of these metal bits on both sides. This is exactly the same design as the one at the River Eden. And you can see it's repeated over there as well. Now this uh, brick wall here is pretty much just being built to stop it from falling in because track level it would be about here. So that is the motorway viaduct over there. It was 
the first viaduct encountered on the St Andrews Railway, one of two, and they were both designed by the infamous Tommy B, Thomas Balch, Boch, now we're going to surname, I really don't know to be honest, it's one of those annoying ones that has too many letters that can make too many different sounds. But anyway, the St Andrews Railway was infamous for being built on the cheap. Instead of the usual three foot spacing between the sleepers, they had a four foot spacing, which meant the line was severely, severe, severely limited in its speed. I apologize there, the stammer. So trains could only do about 20, 15, 20 miles per hour, and it also severely restricted the weight that could be carried on these trains. So yeah, this line has a bit of an infamous history of being built in the cheap, and it was one of the first ones that was built in the cheap like this. And it shows pretty much today by the fact that what remains of it just feels.